Are you going to get that extra $200 in your Social Security check that's being talked about in Congress right now? In this video, I'm going to explain the details of that bill. Right now, there are seven uh, specific items that are being proposed in that legislation. And so we're going to look at the details of each of those. The first one is a change to the cost of living adjustment index. If we are going to get an increase to our Social Security checks, it's because of an index increase. And so right now, the present system, uh, those COLAs are tied to the consumer price index for uh, urban uh, wage earners and clerical workers. Okay, which simply means this, they determine a, a, a basket of goods and services that these workers are actually buying. And then what they do is they look at the third quarter of the year. So this last year would have been 2021. Uh, and they measure that uh, to the third quarter of the next year, which is 2022. And any percentage increase in the cost of these goods and services, and of course last year it was 8.7%. And that's how we got our 8.7% uh, cost of living adjustment because of that index. So what the proposal is, is to go to an index that's going to be a more accurate representation of the Social Security uh, population. And that is called the CPI E or elderly. And so what this is, it's a different um, uh, basket of goods and services. And there's certainly some overlap, but in here, a lot more emphasis and more weight on healthcare expenditures and different things that elderly people are actually buying. Uh, this is just really not a good accurate representation. So in this legislation, if it passes, they will start tracking cost of living adjustments to that particular index, which should then give some uh, more reasonable cost of living as adjustments uh, to uh, that segment of the population. Hey everybody, just real quick, I want to remind you to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell below. Just recently, I had a lady call me and she was scammed three times to switch her plans in one week just because she didn't have an education. We upload three videos every week and our content is designed to give you the education that you need so you will not make those kind of mistakes. If you subscribe and ring the bell below, you'll never miss an upload. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Now the second item being proposed is an update as well as an increase, an increasing amount for the special minimum benefit. Now, uh, many people are never affected by the special minimum benefit. However, there are some that are, and this is a group of people that are called lifetime low earners, which means they worked all their life, but they did not make a lot of money, therefore did not contribute a lot into Social Security. Now the average person's Social Security benefit is based upon what is called their primary insurance amount. If they go to full retirement age, that's what they get. If they take early, they take less. If they take later, they, they get more. And so uh, lifetime low earners have very low primary insurance amounts. And so this system in 1972 established a way for lifetime low income earners to be able to get more money. And so they set up for them what is called a special primary insurance amount, okay? The problem is uh, primary insurance amounts are adjusted whenever we have a cost of living adjustment, and these adjust based upon uh, in, in, uh, a wage index. This primary insurance amount, for whatever reason they did this back in 1972, they tied it to the consumer price index, okay, which does not go up as drastically as what this does. So now what's happening is a special uh, primary insurance amount is still very low. And so in this legislation, what they're doing, they're going to change the index, they're going to raise it, and they're going to they're base it upon how many years this person worked, which means if you worked uh, 10 years or you worked 30 years, the person with 30 years is going to be able to make more money. And they're going to tie this to the federal poverty level. Okay. And so then if someone worked 30 years, uh, then this new index would give them 125% of that federal poverty level, which is going to give them a greater amount in their social security benefit, actually substantially more for them. So again, this will benefit those that were lifetime low earners. Okay. Item number three that is being proposed is a restoration of social security benefits for students. Now this specifically are for students who are the children of parents that are on disability or have died, they've deceased, okay, specifically increasing these benefits. Now the present system, what happens is a student can get benefits, uh, but those benefits would cease at the age of 19, okay? They enacted this basically back in 1983, they changed this. And so right now, benefits for Social Security stop at 19. And so in this legislation, it's going to go now to age 22. So a student of a disability uh, parent or one that's deceased then can get these benefits for an extra three years and really will be very helpful for them. Uh, they do have to be in school full time, either in high school and college or in a vocational school to be able to get the benefits now to age 22. 
Now, this fourth change being proposed is uh, definitely going to help the whole overall system financially, but it's also kind of a technical issue as well, and that's this. What they're going to do is they're going to combine a couple of the trust funds. They're going to combine the old age and survivor insurance trust fund with the disability insurance trust fund and make those one. And they will just simply rename those two, and it will become the Social Security Trust Fund. All right? And so that's the fourth change. Now, the fifth change being proposed in this legislation is an increase to the net investment income tax schedule. And so the net investment income tax is this. Let me just read this to you. It says, in general, the net investment income tax includes, but is not limited to, interest, dividends, capital gains, rental and royalty income, and non-qualified annuity income. Net investment income generally does not include wages, unemployment compensation, Social Security benefits, alimony, and most self-employment income. Okay, the reason for that is because this net investment income really has to do with things uh, that were not subject to normal uh, payroll taxes. Okay, so it's all those things beyond that. All right, and so what's going to happen now is they're going to propose, if this legislation passes, an increase to this amount. Now, there are some thresholds for this. It would only be net investment income uh, for a single person that was above $200,000 or above, then that increase in tax is going to affect you. If you're married uh, and you file a joint return, uh, the, the threshold is $250,000. So if I stay below those limits, uh, this tax is going to not have any impact on you, at least this increase is not. And so what happens is the present system, everything above uh, these thresholds with net investment income has a 3.8% uh, tax on it. That's the present system. If this legislation passes, they're going to add a 12.4% or 0% to that. What is that? That would be a full Social Security amount because we uh, pay 12.40% uh, in uh, Social Security taxes up to a certain limit. And so that's 12.40. Now, if you work for someone, the employer pays half and, and you pay half. And when it comes to this, uh, this net investment income tax, this would be totally on you. And so for above the thresholds, they're going to add, add that. So what's going to happen is this is going to go into the Social Security Trust Fund and this is going to go to the General Treasury. All right. And so, again, this is a huge increase. Now, the impact of this, of course, is going to affect wealthy people. I would read one report that if this were to pass, uh, this would cost Elon Musk, the highest CEO uh, in, the, in the country, probably the world, it would cost him an additional $3 billion um, in uh, Social Security taxes. Now, the CEO of Amazon, and again, not Jeff Bezos, but the CEO of, um, of Amazon makes uh, a little over $200 million. And so uh, that person would be responsible for an additional $26 million in taxes if this legislation were to pass. So as you can see, this is a huge amount of money that could go into the Social Security Trust Fund. So the sixth item being proposed is uh, an adjustment to the maximum uh, uh, taxable earnings for Social Security. So in the present system today, March 1, 2023, here's the way it works. Social Security taxes are 12.40%. Uh, you pay that full amount if you're self-employed. If you work for someone, what happens is you pay 6.20% and your employer pays 6.20%. But this amount that we owe, whether it's the full amount of self-employed or each of us as the employee and employer, this maxes out at this year at $160,200. So every dollar I make above that, zero is gonna be subject to Social Security taxes. Now, uh, what's going to happen if this legislation passes is this. They're going to really, they're gonna, they're gonna change that limit, and they're going to say this. Any money over $250,000 will now be subject to that 12.40% Social Security taxes. Okay, so let's run a quick number. Let's say someone makes $500,000. Okay, they're making $500,000, and this legislation passes. What's going to happen? Uh, the first uh, $160,200 in the present system would be taxable. And let's just say that they're, um, uh, they're self-employed. $160,200, they have to pay 12.40%. They would have had to pay in Social Security taxes $19,800, and I'm just going to round it up, $865, actually $64.80, okay, in Social Security taxes and they are totally done because they hit that limit. 
So now what happens? Well, now anything above $250,000 is going to be subject uh, to those taxes. And so what's going to happen? They're, they're uh, at $500,000, so they just picked up an additional $250,000 of income. So that's $250,000 times 12.4%. That's going to cost them an extra $31,000 if this legislation passes. All right. So this would have been their bill in the present system. And their new bill would be what? 59,000. Excuse me. That bill would be $49,864. That's going into the Social Security Trust Fund. So that's a substantial amount of money. Now, this last item that is uh, part of the, uh, the bill uh, is to increase everyone's Social Security benefits by $200. So let me show you how that's going to work. Now, before I do, I think I need to share the formula with you so you'll know exactly uh, what they're adjusting. So when we calculate Social Security benefits, it all starts with this. They take your highest 35 years of earnings. If you work 40 years, they take the top 35. If you, if you have 30, then you're going to have some zeros. So you have 50 years you work, again, top 35. They take those, and what they have to do is, because it's so long ago that you made that money, they actually have to index those, which means what? They have to uh, bring those up to current wages. And what I mean by that is 35 years ago, $10,000 then is equal to $60,000. So they're going to index it up so to make sure your numbers are accurate. And so they're going to index up and they're going to take that. And let's just use the example. Let's say we made, you know, $60,000 a year. And they'll, they'll take that total, okay, and they divide that by 420 months. Okay, remember what I'm talking about, 35 years. So let's just say, again, we made uh, 60000 a year for 35 years. Uh, that would give us equal to $2.1 million in that 35 years. And what they're going to do is they're going to divide that by the 420, and you'll see that's going to give us $5,000. Now, this is called an AIM. It's the average index monthly earnings, so that's $5,000. So they have to get to everyone's AIM. And then what happens is they take that AIM, that $5,000 AIM, and they're going to calculate what is called your primary insurance amount. And so the way to do that, this primary insurance amount, is basically what your uh, Social Security benefit will be at your full retirement age. Now, some take early, would get less than uh, primary insurance amount, some take later, and they get a higher amount, okay? But that's your full retirement age amount. So once they have the aim, what they do is they apply the aim to what are called bend points. Bend points, okay? And here's where some of the changes are going are to occur. Now, right now, what we have is we have, we have three bend points in the current system. The first one is $1,115. And of that $1,115, we get, we get 90% of that. Okay, that's bend point number one. Hey, my name's Josh Music, and if you've been enjoying my dad Marvin Music's content, you really need to go to our website, medicareschool.com. When you go there, you'll be given the opportunity to download a free one hour Medicare Essentials workshop, and it's gonna take you all the way from Medicare A to Z. By the time you're done watching that workshop, uh, you're gonna know how to enroll in Medicare, when to enroll in Medicare. You're gonna know the differences between Advantage plans, supplemental plans. You're gonna know how to get drug coverage. You're gonna know everything you need to know to get the best coverage possible. So go ahead, go to MedicareSchool.com and watch the Medicare Essentials workshop. Now the next bend point is $6,721. And we actually get 32% of the difference between 1115 and 6,021. Now, if we're above the 6,021, what happens is then we get 15% of all that amount above 6,021. Now, my example, uh, we only had $5,000, so that third uh, percentage does not affect us at all. It doesn't affect most people. But again, if you're high income, that, you, you, you could get 15% of that, all right? So that is the present system as it sits today. So let's calculate what our Social Security benefit would be. So we get 90% of the first uh, $1,115. So we get 90%, that's a little over $1,000. And then we get um, uh, uh, the, the, the addition up to 5,000, we're getting 32% of that. And so that is gonna be um, $5,000 less the 1,115. That gives us 3,885, we get 32% of that. So we get 32% of that um, number. 
and we add the two together, and that makes our primary insurance amount under the current system $2,246.70. That's the present system based upon uh, the bin points um, as, as they stand. All right, now, if I take my Social Security before then, before my full retirement age, I'm gonna get less. It's 6% a year less. If I grow that amount, it will grow at 8%. Okay, so that's the primary insurance amount. So what is being proposed is this. So here's the proposed. So this is how they're gonna give people an additional $200 or more within their Social Security check. What they're saying first, first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna give an increase to this number right out of the gate. They're gonna increase that number by 22%. So we take 115 and we go 22%, okay? And that brings this first bin point at 1,600, no, $1,360.30, okay? And then, they're going to raise this 90% to 95%, okay? Now, the next bin point is the same. They're not, they're not going to alter that, uh, at least not in the present uh, legislation. So we're at 6,721 even, right, at that number there. So we know we get 32% of that, and that fourth uh, percentage is still going to be 15%. But in my example of $5,000 uh, for my um, averaged index uh, monthly earnings, we don't get into that. So now let's see what our check would be if this legislation goes through. Now we have an increase of 22% uh, to that first number. So we're at 13,630, and we're going to get 95% of that. So that gives us 12 a hundred and ninety two dollars and twenty nine cents okay and then again we're going to get the same amount because we have that difference of um, let's go back of the one 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 five excuse me of the five thousand dollars minus now our thirteen sixty thirty and we get what thirty two percent of that okay and that's going to be 1,164.70. And again, we don't get to 15%, so we add that to 1292.29. Uh, and now our check would be $2,456.99 if that legislation passed by increasing the first bin point number and increasing the, 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 the bin point percentage. We said our check was 224670 and now it goes to 245699 uh, as you can see right at a $200 and 10 cents a month increase. So that's how they're going to give everybody on social security. Uh, they don't they're going to alter these numbers but all, uh, by altering that first bend point and by increasing the percentage you're going to get everyone on average right at $200 additional in their check. And so you can see there's lots of things being proposed. And so their goal is this. Their goal is to increase people's Social Security checks just because of all the inflation issues we're addressing, as well as solidifying uh, the Social Security Trust Fund. And they're proposing right now, if all these changes go through, that that will extend the life of the Social Security Trust Fund an additional 75 years. Because right now, remember, there's plenty of money there. But when we get to uh, 2035, here in just 12 years, uh, they say that if nothing changes, they'll only be, be able to pay out somewhere between about 75 to 80 percent of everyone's Social Security benefit, which means everyone on Social Security, if there's no changes, is going to take about a 20 to 25 percent pay cut. And that's drastic, especially for those people who rely on Social Security alone. All right. Now, will this pass? I have no idea. But I do know there needs to be some very serious discussion about all these items. And we'll just have to wait and see what Congress does.